Relax, it's Dr. Foreman. Also, the production value during those hallucinations was so good that it could have been a game in itself. Incredible. Very excited to be reacting to House MD Season 6 Episode 3 Epic Fail. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 House episodes, and this will be Episode 115. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does as a doctor working in London. Vince, that place is a death trap. Lucky for you, I've got the Mega Blaster. Where are you? Hey boss, you just like watching us get our asses shredded? Vince? My hands are on fire. Your blood work looks normal. And what is it? I don't know. Don't you have some famous diagnostics guy? What's he doing? I quit. You can't quit. I need to change my environment, my habits. Research means no patience, less pressure. I just can't risk coming back here. Okay. I want to run the department. Departments of diagnostic medicine don't exist. The only reason we have one is because of house. House was a genius. I can do this. You get one shot. You're the boss. It's kind of sexy. What about complex regional pain syndrome? That's a good idea. Prep the patient for spinal simulation. I think it's mercury poisoning. I ate a ton of sushi. Burning hands while House's career goes up in flames or what beautifully combustible symmetry. But what could cause our game developer's hands to take an independent trip to the equator? We already know that his general blood, sugar, thyroid levels and nerve conduction studies were normal. Out of the common stuff that would cause weird peripheral neuropathy, I definitely want to know his alcohol intake, B12 levels, any odd medication like chemotherapy or any strange tick bites he's had recently since that could be a sign of Lyme disease. The high sushi intake could be a clue but maybe not directly. It could be that him eating a lot of sushi is a sign that he also has a lot of sake which could explain their hands. We definitely want a higher spice level diagnosis for this though so what else could it be? Well metabolic could be perforia, infectious could be AIDS, degenerative could be amyloidosis, neoplastic could be paraneoplastic syndrome associated with lung cancer. This could cause antibodies which attack the peripheral nerves Inflammatory could be Guillain-Barre syndrome, but that would usually start at the feet. Toxic could be stiffing glue or carbon monoxide poisoning. It still doesn't quite explain the high sushi consumption, as well as the episode title of Epic Fail, so let's get more clues. Check out the Atlantic Medical Journal. Who needs actual doctors when you got the internet? Well, no offense, but doctors make mistakes. You should check the rate of patient error. It's gotta be worth one lousy blood test. You know how House feels about people touching his ball. No, Chase refuses to tell me. <laughs> test results? Surprise, surprise. Marcus Webley was wrong. Well, you must be the genius's replacement. I prefer to think of myself as genius 2.0. What was my mercury level? 2.8. I want mercury chelation. You're not interested in my medical opinion. You'll move on to a doctor willing to run all the unnecessary tests and procedures you want. Makes no difference to me. Dr. Foreman basically strong on me. Is this supposed to hurt? Not if we're incorrectly. My chest can't breathe. His lungs are filling with fluid. Oh, this power struggle between Foreman and the patient has somehow turned on the waterworks in the patient's lungs. Definitely not something Foreman will want on his CV if he fails to diagnose this patient. If you remember before, I spoke about a lung cancer associated with antibody secretion that just went way up in the differential likelihood. If this happens in real life, the first thing I would want after stabilizing the patient, of course, would be a chest x-ray. They're surprisingly easy to get as the patient doesn't even need to be stable enough to go to the radiology department for it. A portable x-ray machine can be wheeled up to the patient with a sensor device put behind their back and then the x-ray fired through the patient's chest directly at it. The quality you get is significantly worse than if you got it in the department and you can't use it to assess the size of the heart. That's because when the x-rays go from forwards to backwards, which we call AP for anterior posterior, they magnify the heart compared to when they go backwards to forwards called PA for posterior anterior. Why would that happen? Well, it's the same reason as if you look at a corridor of trees, even if they're all the same size, then the closest will appear larger. Perspective. The heart is in the front of the chest, so if the x-rays are taken from front to back, then the heart is closer to the source compared to the other way around. Simple. Either way, if that lung cancer has bled, we may be able to see that quickly on the x-ray or other signs like a collapsed lobe of the lung. We could also take a sample of the fluid of the lungs to see if it's thick or watery, which narrows down the course. I do think it fits really well here, so 
Perineal plastic lung cancer has to be my first diagnostic guess. Question for you smart people. Would you prefer your doctors to give you their opinion and follow that or work things out for yourself? Answers down below. The lung problem is really a heart problem. It's got a thickened left ventricle. When's this new game coming out? Couple months. Might be using more than coffee to power through. So we search his office for drugs? We're gonna ask him for balls. Oh, no, no, no. They're browning way too fast. Vinegar could work. You shouldn't trust the results of the hemoglobin A1C test on a chronically acidotic patient. Browning meat is the same chemical process. You might have saved my balls. How long have you guys been doing it? You hacked my profile page? Is there a shot of just her? I'm thinking screensaver. We need to know if you've been using cocaine. I cleaned up my act 12 years ago after my college roommate OD'd. Search his office. You have to forget about him. The patient? House. Hi. Making yuki. House. I'm gonna miss you. Guess you're not in a hurry to get back to the office. I'm not trying to avoid my boyfriend. The work part I can get used to. He didn't ask me to go to dinner. He told me we were going. Wow. It's so amazing the way the wings move. It's so real. I know what's wrong with the patient. Whoever says video games are a waste of time needs to spend a minute with a Mega Blaster. I'm sure they'll change their mind. In all seriousness, no, there's evidence that people who've played video games growing up actually become better surgeons as they've spent all this time training their hand-eye coordination, problem-solving skills, and ability to cope under pressure. Here though, it's given us way more than that, a clue. That's because 13 has noticed that these bats are quite realistic, which either means that the patient is some kind of bat design savant, or more likely he's spent a lot of time researching bats. We know that they can harbor all kinds of diseases, so if he's gotten close to them, then it isn't much of a stretch to say he has an infection. What bat infection could cause burning hand symptoms though, especially now with the added river relocation to his lungs? He could have been bitten and developed rabies, but we have had that diagnosis before. Hendra or Nipah virus could do it if he's been in contact with fruit bats, but histoplasmosis could definitely do it, and that affects multiple organ systems, including the lungs and the nerves. I like the theory, so I'm gonna go with histoplasmosis as my second diagnostic guess. Little help. Did you touch them? Can't dissect without touching. It's also a good way to contract an infection called psittacosis. Does that infection cause problems in the joystick area? You've had an erection for three hours. This isn't psittacosis. We had to put in a surgical shunt just to drain the blood. Thrombocytosis. His platelet count isn't that high. It is possible for a brain tumor to cause We're going with thrombocytosis. Who are those guys? Meet the competition. Steve Pulse with Neurology St. Mark's. You called another doctor? Lots of other doctors. I can cure all your symptoms with my papaya toxin cleanse. Okay, that guy's an idiot. That doesn't mean they all are. I noticed you haven't done a head MRI yet. I'm pretty sure he's got a brain tumor. Treatment. Looks like we need a tiebreaker. Dr. Hadley. I think both theories have merit. So, brain tumor. Otherwise, you'd back your boss slash boyfriend. Fine, I'll set it up. Did you even go to bed last night? Bed is for sissies. I couldn't sleep because of my leg. Just either make ragu or go out on the street looking to score. So, so good. MRI is clean. Treat for thrombocytosis. I'm just afraid of giving him control over you. It's my work at home. It makes it almost impossible for him to do his job. You just suggested that I give in so that I could be happy. What did they do to you in there? This might be the best thing I've ever eaten. You're an amazing cook. Yeah, my leg hurts. My leg's killing me. What are you worried about? That nothing's gonna help. His lymph nodes blew up. He's been treated for thrombocytosis, but there's been no change. If Hugh Laurie ever decides to move into the restaurant business, I would happily be his first customer. But our patient probably doesn't have much of an appetite now. His lymph nodes have voted for aggressive expansion. Now the question is, which disease was sitting on the board when that vote took place? Lymphoma could potentially do it, but that usually is much slower growing. Tuberculosis, sarcoidosis, lupus, and mono could all do it as well. Considering the size of the glands, we definitely want an ultrasound to see if they're uniformly enlarged like in reactive lymph node growth or if they look like cancer or an abscess. You see, lymph nodes here look like a problem, but they actually serve quite a useful purpose as your immune system's army basis. That's why if you get a throat infection, you might get some swelling in the nodes in your neck. That's your body sending across its best cells to make those space invaders regret the day they entered your fleshy fortress. So in the real world, when would we be concerned about those swollen lymph nodes? If they stay swollen for more than three weeks, if there's just one that keeps growing and is associated with fevers, if they're completely painless to touch and they're present above and below the diaphragm, then you definitely need to speak to your doctor. Let's get more clues. God, you are a genius. I'm adding this to my list of symptoms. Now I'm offering a $25,000 reward. 
Steroids reduced his facial swelling. How did so many people get my personal email? Lymph enlargement makes me think polyautoritis. Your stunt generated quite a few responses. Let's take a look. I'm way ahead of you. You are possessed by the biblical demon Legion. No. Went through my emails. Amyloidosis got the most votes. I'll make you a deal. We'll do a kidney biopsy to test for amyloidosis. When it comes back negative, you pull your case off of the internet. Biopsy showed deposits in the renal endothelium consistent with amyloidosis. I started one dexamethasone. I quit. I came here to work with House. We'll be fine without him. Do you know how many resumes we get every day without even asking? Relax, it's Dr. Foreman. because he's burning up. Amyloidosis wouldn't do this. We think you have a disease called LCDD. It causes proteins that build up in your organs. I think the best shot for both of us is to treat for LCDD. Oh, was that a form of epiphany? He's very much in his stride now. Also, the production value during those hallucinations was so good that it could have been a game in itself. Incredible. There's no time for games now though, as Foreman and his prune fingers hold the solution to cracking the case. So why do we even get those prune fingers after a shower? Well, we used to think that when we spend a lot of time in water, the outer layers of the skin begin to swell, which leads to a larger outside surface area that forces the shape of the print into an oval. We know that the wrinkling happens because of shrinking blood vessels. The tissue collapses over the top of the narrowed blood vessels causing the crinkles. And it might be useful for us to be able to keep a good palm grip even with wet hands. But what does that have to do with our patient's very dry hallucination? Wait a minute, he had the hallucination because he had a fever and he wouldn't respond to meds to get his temp down, which is why he was in the ice bath to begin with. I didn't quite look at his finger with binoculars, but what if they didn't get pruny? What could that mean? Well. It could be a sign of nerve damage since the reflex would need to be mediated by nerve cell functions. And alas, following the Sherlock cerebral steam train has led us right back to where we started, nerve damage. Well, as a cause of nerve damage, lung effusions, burning hands and swollen lymph glands, I'm going to go for polyarthritis nodosa as my final diagnostic guess. We are locked in. Question for you smart people, how easily do your fingers wrinkle and has it changed since you were a child? Answers down below. Stop the chemo. He's got Fabry's disease. His fingers should have pruned, but they didn't. Already stopped chemo. I had nine months. His lymph nodes swelled up after the head CT. I looked through the online responses again. Someone posted it this morning. Heard Cuddy made it official. Department's yours. Congrats. I really don't think this is going to work. You're firing me. Sorry. My leg stopped hurting. Maybe diagnostic medicine is the key to keeping you clean. I guess we're gonna find out. It was a house. I wanna say I'm surprised, but come on. Who else was gonna put through a last minute solution to that case? Also, Fabry disease is such a tough diagnosis to get. It's an inherited neurological disorder which causes your body to not be able to break down fatty materials, causing them to deposit where they shouldn't. This can frequently be in the nerves. It usually starts in childhood with reduced sweating, burning, and tingling. Then it can progress to kidney disease and abnormal heart rhythms. We can treat it by replacing the deficient enzyme with a synthetic version called alpha-galactosidase in tablet form. Brilliant episode overall, 8.2 out of 10 entertainment, loved the whole posting the case online situation, 7.9 out of 10 accuracy, although it was quite a late presentation of Fabrice, and 9 out of 10 diagnosis. This episode doesn't make full sense until you watch the previous one where a house gets released from rehab, hit 